Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. What if my stress fracture still swells and hurts a lot after wearing a fracture walking boot? Well, that's what we're talking about today on the Doc on the Run podcast. Now, today's episode actually comes from a question from one of the YouTube viewers on the Doc on the Run YouTube channel. And Ivan has a great question. He wanted to know, uh, after watching the video, can I run after wearing a fractured walking boot? He wanted to know, if the foot still swells and has a lot of pain, what do I do? Well, this is a great question because any time a runner gets a stress fracture, you really have to confirm the foot is healed enough to withstand the forces and stresses applied to the injured bone when you run. Now, there are really three different strategies that doctors use with this approach. The first one is to just wait long enough to guarantee the stress fracture is healed completely. And although there are no guarantees in medicine, we know that, let's say, you get a stress fracture and say, okay, take six months off of running, wear a fracture walking boot for three months of that time, and then just walk and, and take it easy for another three months after that. Well, in the overwhelming majority of times, that'll probably heal the stress fracture. If it's a really minor stress fracture, you're almost guaranteed to have it healed then. So the doctor might say, well, you know, it, we think most of the time it takes about this long, so we'll wait a whole lot longer than that of no activity, of immobilization, of wearing a fracture walking boot, of something that actually will allow it to heal. So that's one approach. Second approach is to wait and let it heal a little bit and then get an imaging study that basically proves the stress fracture is uh, healed completely. And what we mean is that if we get a, 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 an x-ray of your stress fracture and we can see a tiny little crack in the bone and then we put you in a fracture walking boot or we wait for a period of time uh, that we think is long enough to let it actually heal and you haven't done anything to mess it up and then we get an x-ray that actually shows some little wavy lines that shows there's calcium deposits and actual solid bone healed across the fracture site. Well, in that case, then we know that the bone is healed, it's stronger, it's stable, it's not gonna crack, and so we then let you run on it because we've basically proven that it's healed. The third approach, though, is what most people who call me are trying to figure out how to do, and that is to figure out whether or not the stress fracture is healed um, enough to withstand the, withstand the forces that you're gradually applying to it as you do everything that you need to do to maintain your running fitness and return to running safely. So you're basically ramping up your activity in a graduated fashion, but using the clues that you get about improvement or lack thereof as you track your own progress all the way. Now, although I can't tell Ivan what to do because I'm not his doctor, I haven't evaluated him, I don't really know anything about his situation, I don't know how bad the fracture was, I don't know which, where the fracture was, I don't know anything about his medical history, if he has any metabolic disorders that could slow down his healing, I don't know anything about Ivan at all. But what I do know is that there are three very specific indicators of ongoing tissue damage when you have a stress fracture that you should be watching out for. The first one is bruising. So if you have bruising, what does that mean? That means that the bone is cracking, it's bleeding under the skin, and then you see this discoloration of the blood under the skin that we call a bruise. If you have bruising, terrible, terrible thing. You do not want to have bruising when you have a stress fracture. The second thing is pain. So bruising is the worst sign. Pain is the most... Uh, sort of frequent sign that you get. And it's the one that gives you the, the most immediate indicator of trouble. So if you have pain, you have to assume that you're moving, stressing, uh, the, or irritating the fracture site in a way that causes discomfort that you sense is pain. The third thing is swelling. When you have swelling, what you have is a repair process going on. You have inflammation. Your body's trying to get things there to actually heal the fracture, to address the problem. If you have swelling, and he says it swells a lot, well, then we have to assume that something is going on that is causing that swelling. In most cases, it's too much activity, too much stress applied to the injured bone. So remember, if your foot really swells and you have a lot of pain, then you have to have ongoing tissue damage. So I have to presume that the forces that Ivan is applying to the bone that have a stress fracture are way too high. Now, I don't know exactly what he's doing because I don't know his situation, but if the forces are too high, you will get pain at the fracture site. If the bone is moving and potentially getting micro fractures at the fracture site that are ongoing, you could get bruising, but you, you certainly have this cycle of ongoing 
tissue repair and subsequent damage that could cause swelling as well. So if Ivan scheduled a consultation over webcam with me, the questions that I would ask him are, did your doctor do something like uh, to confirm that the bone was healed, like get an x-ray? Have you been tracking your pain? Are you doing something to actually judge whether or not the stresses at the fracture site are getting better or getting worse as you do activities? Because that's another one of your indications that it's actually safe for you to ramp up. You know, if you're ramping up your activity and your pain's going down, that's obviously the best situation. What are you doing to the stress, reduce the stresses on the bone? I mean, this is the stuff I teach you in the metatarsal stress fracture course, but you really have to think about not timeline, not six weeks, not three months. What are you doing to speed up that timeline? What are you doing to re reduce the stresses to that bone enough that you can actually start increasing your activity level, get your running fitness back so that you don't re-injure it later? And then I would also want to know, um, you know, what it is that you think is has gone wrong. So if it's been a long time, you've used a fracture walking boot, you've gotten out of the boot, and yet you're having pain and swelling, you have to think back and go, okay, what did I do that maybe was not part of the plan here? What is it that's made this go sideways? But just remember, if you've got a stress fracture and you want it to get it healed and you want to get back to running as quickly as possible, it's never about that timeline. It's all about how thoughtful you can be and how many different actions you can take during the healing process to encourage healing in the bone and maintain your running specific fitness to better support the injured bone so that you can actually return to running sooner. That's the whole name of the game. Now, if you haven't checked it out yet, you might want to see the metatarsal stress fracture masterclass I put together for you. You can get it for free. It's a, it's a deep dive, about half an hour. We're going to all these things you really need to think about if you're a runner who has a stress fracture and you want to run. You can get it at docontherun.com slash stress fracture masterclass. So uh, docontherun.com slash yeah, stress fracture masterclass. So uh, go check it out and I'll see you in the training. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.